Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and some of our thoughts on the latest games releasing. As usual, it's your old pal Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Persona 5. Persona has been an explosion of hype since Persona 5 released in Japan last September, and the North American release has seen some pretty crazy high anticipation and high review scores, but this is not the huge AAA mainstream game some uninformed people may have really been expecting. Persona 5 is a well-made game with hours and hours of good gameplay to spare. In that regard, it's absolutely awesome. Its style, its presentation, its story are extremely unique, but maybe not for everyone. With the game wearing so many hats, I think there's a lot to love and a lot to scare people away. I, I think it'll take a lot of work and investment on your part, but you might as well pull up a chair. Let's talk about this. Firstly, keep in mind I'm approaching this from the newcomer's perspective since this seems like the biggest North American Persona release, at least in a while. Just what the hell is Persona? It's a JRPG. It's almost an anime. You collect and battle with party members and monsters. You go through dungeons, but then you also live out your normal life through high school and manage your time and schedule. Persona is extremely driven by time management, a little dash of grind, and lots of story and character. The basic setup here, and I'm gonna keep it very simple, two worlds exist in Persona, the real world and the shadow world. In the shadow world, people wear masks as their personalities and remove them to unleash their personas. These are these manifestations of their inner psyche. They're also really cool, awesomely designed monsters. You play as a displaced, quiet, mild-mannered, kind of geeky teenage boy attending a new high school in Tokyo who is suddenly thrust into this new, crazy, mystical world. The whole setup here is about developing connections with your friends who can help you out in the real world and the metaverse, strengthening you and giving you more abilities for your personas and stuff to battle with. Thankfully though, you don't have to have played the previous games. This is a fresh tale with familiar tones, but it's filled with some surprisingly mature themes of like stuff like rape, abuse, insanity, Sanity, but then there's talking cats and high school drama. I'm probably doing an awful job of explaining it. It's pretty tough. The game does do a better job, but the game also takes a long time explaining things because it's so complex. That's probably my biggest complaint here. It's that Persona 5 takes a long time to get going. I really didn't have a good time with the first few hours, honestly. At least the first six or seven, depending on your experience with the series. After that, though, the game's normal pace gets established, and things get moving, and things get great. But for some people, especially newcomers to the series, the early moments may be rough and a bit too long. Learning the many, many systems of this game is absolutely worth it because there's fun stuff here, I think, for everyone. Maybe you like visual novels and anime because you get plenty of high school drama with interesting characters. Maybe you're into more time management sim style games. Well, you're in luck because you can get lost in subway stations and streets of Tokyo while eating cheeseburgers, buying stuff, getting into hijinks, training yourself, reading, studying, all the while just making sure you attend and do well in high school and then defeat all kinds of evils in the metaverse. That is a mouthful and it's insane and it sounds like a lot to handle and it is because the game does kind of push you along and give you deadlines at times. But thankfully managing your life and upgrading your knowledge, your guts, your kindness and proficiency levels while also working a part-time job for money to buy say something like potions on a weekly basis actually becomes a pretty addictive hook and that's probably one of the main draws here for a lot of people. It's good play. But my favorite aspect is where it gets JRPG like because there are a lot of systems in play and it's just a good battle system. It's turn-based through and through and I, I think it's pretty great. You have your own attacks and a cool gun as well as control over your party members but what are essentially your magic attacks are reserved for summoning those personas that you have. Not only do they have various different attacks, they can be collected and traded in and upgraded to put it kind of simply, to get better and cooler looking personas. It's cool, it's a bit like other Japanese monster collecting games. These elements of the game are strong because battles are stylish, fun, and not overly long. If you know what you're doing and you learn enemies' weaknesses, you can string attacks along and stun enemies in a row while handing off extra attacks to other players, embracing this whole one more system and it just feels badass and great. Doing this allows you to interrogate down personas for items, money, or you can even take them as your own. Now stringing along attacks and stunning enemies in a row and continuing your turn sounds like it makes the game pretty easy, but it it goes both ways. The enemies can do this to you, and thankfully, Persona gets pretty damn challenging, but it's a good, fair, and nice challenge. I, I like really kind of sticking my teeth into it. These battles usually go down in dungeons. The dungeon quote-unquote system are these story-based palaces. These palaces are complex dungeons that are like twisted manifestations of a bad person. You sort of stealth your way around these dungeons, figuring out light puzzles, finding keys, and battling enemies by getting the first attack turn by getting a drop on them. These dungeons are long and a bit of a grind, but definitely not in a bad way. You can make some progress and then return to the real world, thankfully, to rest, go to school, and then gear up and prepare for moving on in the dungeon some more. These are nice, good old chunks of RPG gameplay, but the on-foot controls and cover controls can feel a little clunky and annoying at times, at least for me. But thankfully, it's not really the main focus. There's also these side dungeons that are NPC-given side quests. These are 
procedurally generated and they're called mementos, but they're still pretty great for getting stronger and progressing through the game. All of these different gameplay mechanics fall on the shoulders of the story heavy focus. And thankfully, as zany and weird and out there as it really is, it works pretty damn well. A lot of this falls on the characters. There's a colorful cast of supporting characters. And while some may not have the immediate love and impact that Persona 4 characters did, there's a lot to dive into here. You're gonna be spending a lot of time with these people, you know, knowing their dreams, their desires, their fears, their flaws, etc. And like everything in this game, the longer you spend on it, the more you'll grow to love it. I'm glossing over a lot here, but I'm trying to give you an idea of how the game works and what it does well, because I could also sit here and explain everything and the ins and outs of all the mechanics, but we'd be here all night. And I do want to acknowledge the over-the-top style here. While the in-game graphics honestly don't look very great at all, because this is also a PS3 game, you might not know, the animated cutscenes and all the different types of music genres blasting and the crazy, insane menus and interfaces make this one of the most interesting looking games we've seen in a while. Even the freaking pause upgrade and item screens have more love in them than some big AAA games do and that's refreshing as hell but also kind of indicative of the game as a whole if you think about it you know it's weird it's confusing it's sensory overload but with so much charm that it's worth sticking around and you'll definitely stick around all right expect to sink at least like a hundred hours into this bad boy just think long and hard about whether this is the type of game for you I, I tried to explain it the best I could the way I feel about it, you know I'm not head over heels in love but I absolutely absolutely enjoyed playing it and I think you might too well I hope you do even if it's out outside your comfort zone, maybe consider it. Maybe watch some more videos about it. Because even if this type of game isn't your thing, like I said earlier, there's so many different elements going on that one of them you may really like, and you may just stick around for the rest of it. But you know how this works, guys. This is a before you buy. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion thrown in there, but now I definitely want to hear yours down in the comments. I've been playing this game for quite a while now. It only just released today, but if you got opinions on it so far, I want to hear what the hardcore fans think, but I also want to hear what the newcomers think. Does this game scare you away? Do you think you're going to have a good time picking it up? And hardcore fans, how do you feel about these new characters? Do you like them as much as the characters from Persona 3 or 4? Let's talk about any of that stuff down in the comments below. I'll be answering your questions as much as I possibly can, but I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at Jake Baldino, talking to you guys over there as well. Thank you guys so much for coming around, though, as usual. You know, clicking the like button helps us out a ton, and if for some reason you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.